chapter number 9, verse number 50, Mark chapter number 9, verse number 50, we will be traveling throughout the Word of God this morning to a couple different places, so uh, don't let your Bible uh, sit too much just beside you, but keep it handy that you can uh, page through the, the pages and uh, share from the Word of God. Amen. Mark chapter number 9, verse number 50. And the young people can go to children's church this morning. Mark 9, verse number 50. Mark says, salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherefore will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Have salt in yourselves. Have salt in yourselves. I'm going to be jumping to a couple of different passages, bringing it together this morning, what I want to share. But I want to tell you that you are a vessel to revival. But your vessel needs to have salt in it. How salty are you? Uh, it is important this morning that we are salty. Uh, our lives need to have salt in them. God has always had a church, but there's been a church inside the church. God has always had a nation, but there has been a nation inside the nation. God has always had a people, but there are people inside the people. Uh, God uh, wants to do something in our midst. And uh, God wants to give us revival. We, we, we preach about it. We sing about it. We long for it. But the only way that we'll ever have revival is when we remain salty. The Word of God says that salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, uh, uh, wherewith shall you season it? I, I don't know a lot about cooking. I, I don't even know a lot about spices. But I know that if you want to have salt, there's something about salt. Oh, I have to say this needs a little more salt. You know, it brings out the flavor and it, it gives it what it needs. But if the salt isn't salty, that's a pretty good word, isn't it? If it isn't salty, it really isn't doing its job in what it needs to do. Now, I know salt is used for more than just uh, uh, cooking and for our taste, but it's used in preserving things. It's used in healing things. It's used in cleansing things. Uh, I, it, it's amazing. Uh, I recently uh, uh, looked at an article about uh, cast iron skillets. And if you like cast iron skillets, my wife likes cast iron skillets. But if they get a little bit of salt on them, or they get a little bit of rust on them, you throw some kosher salt on that and begin to scrub and work, and then you season it, you bake it, whatever, uh, to get it back to where it needs to be. Salt is a cleanser as well. Uh, it gets rid of uh, rust. It gets rid of corrosion. And so, But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how's, it, how's something going to be seasoned? Uh, we need to be salty. If the church has lost its saltiness, how are we going to be effective in the world in which we live? We need revival. Amen. We need revival. We need a move of God's Spirit. But if we've lost our saltiness, if we've lost our effectiveness, if we've lost the, the power of the Word of God in our life, if we've lost the move of the Spirit in our life, we are going to be not effective. God wants us to be salty in our lives. Amen. And I don't believe that an entire nation will take on the job of being salty. But God will have people in the nation. And, and I hate to say this, but I don't even believe the whole church, if we can use that word loosely, is going to take on being the church. But I believe if some folks will get down on their knees, if some folks will make it serious about being a vessel that is full of saltiness, we will see revival. Amen. And so this morning, I am preaching. 
preaching to uh, you this morning to give you a challenge to be a vessel that will bring revival. Amen. I want you to know that you are the work upon the Master's will, and He has made each one of you vessels, but He wants your vessels to be full of saltiness so that you can bring a revival to church and to this generation that so desperately needs God. Thank you for that few folks who said amen. Because whether you said amen or not, it's the truth. <laughs> we need revival. We need revival. Amen. We need revival. Each one of us, the church needs revival. And it starts with us. In the book of 2 Timothy 2, verse number 21, the Bible says that he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared for every good work. Amen. Do you want to be a vessel that is meet for the master's use? Do you want to be a vessel uh, that is sanctified? Do you want to be a vessel that is honorable unto God? This morning you can be, but the necessary thing is you've got to be full of saltiness. You've got to be full of saltiness. It's interesting that in Ezekiel 47, and we'll turn there, Brother Ryan preached so good on that uh, Friday night. I won't say what he said, but I'll share a few other thoughts. That Ezekiel saw a river, and we'll look there, as I said, in a few minutes. And that river, it was amazing what was happening in that river. But you'll find that there are only a few people who really ever dive into the river and begin to sweat. There's some that go into their ankles, or some that will go into their knees, and some that will go into their loins, but it will only be a few, amen, that really fall so in love with God and desirous for a move of God that they say, God, I am diving into the river. I believe that Moses was one who dove into the river. I believe that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were men that dove into the river. Amen. I believe Elijah and Elisha and and Samuel the prophet. Amen. I believe that he dove into the river. Amen. God wants us to dive in this morning. He doesn't want us to just to be a little bit of saltiness, but he wants us to be greatly salty for him. And the necessary thing is to dive into the river so that we can be a vessel that is fit and meet for the master's use, a vessel that is full of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, a vessel that's salty. Praise God. Amen. And so here were uh, these individuals uh, that wanted to do something for God. They said, I want to be more than the status quo. And so in uh, Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 13, the Word of God says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, savor, wherewith all shall be salted. It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast up and trodden under the feet of men. Uh, we need to be salty. If we're going to be the set status quo, we're not good for anything but just to be cast out and trodden under the feet. But God says, I'm looking for men and women who will be salty. And we love as Pentecostals to look at Acts chapter number 2. Let me give you a little trivia here. In Acts chapter number 2, what happened? Pentecost. The move of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost was poured out. And there they were in an upper room. The Bible says that a mighty rushing wind blew in, cloven tongues of fire set upon them, and, and, and they began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave utterance. But let me ask you this question. How many were there in the upper room? 120. That's perfectly correct. Now, do you think that there was just 120 that was invited to come to the upper room? <coughs> no. No. The invitation was given and it was great. There was probably an invitation given to over 600 individuals come to the upper room. 
And uh, so you look at that and saw about a little more than one-sixth of these individuals showed up in the upper room where the Spirit of God was poured out. And there it would be from that place that God would disperse men and women all over the continent that would share the gospel of Jesus Christ under the power of the Holy Ghost and lives would be changed. Amen. Men and women would hear Jesus preach, Jesus crucified and resurrected and ascended unto heaven. And they would be uh, preached to of the Holy Ghost, the same Spirit of God. Amen. You can be baptized in with evidence of speaking in other tongues. But there among the people, there was only a few people, amen, that said, I'm going to the upper room and I'm going to wait and I'm going to tarry for the Spirit of God. You know what they were saying? I don't want to be the status quo. I want the presence and I want the power and I want the unction of God. I don't want to just be a little bit sorry, but I want my vessel to be filled with the saltiness of the presence of God. I want to go out and make a difference in the lives of men and women because I am salty. I want to ask you, the invitations have been given over and over in America Revival Church, amen, to, 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 to surrender your life, uh, to have your life uh, be under the blood of Jesus Christ and sanctified and full of the Spirit of God. Uh, but I wonder when the invitation is given, how many really responds that says, I want to be a vessel uh, that is fit and honorable and sanctified and meet for the master's use. I want to be salty. Amen. Amen. I want to be salty. I want to be salty. Listen, when I pray, I don't want it to be a ritual prayer that, that some folks may say, well, that's the same prayer, but so they'll praise every time. Or, or you can tell it's form or fashion. No, I want to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I want to pray under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I want to pray for people, Brother Craig, and lay my hands upon them. I want to see them healed. Amen. I want to pray and see folks delivered. I want my life to make a difference. I want to be salty. So, Acts chapter number 2 is about men and women who want to be salty. Joel said this. He said, I will pour out my spirit. He was speaking prophetically. But although Joel was back in the Old Testament, he was still very much a Pentecostal prophet, Brother Josh, because he was talking about Pentecost. He was talking about the move of the Spirit. And so, uh, as Joel gave that, uh, he said, I'm going to pour out my Spirit uh, upon uh, your, your, your young men and your old men and your sons and your daughters. And I believe this, that there's coming a time that's been prophetically given that Brother Peter, the former and the latter rain are going to come together and there's going to be a rain down. Amen. Like we've never seen. My apple tree's done great this year. You know why? I believe it's because we got lots of rain. There's apples all over it because it has the abundance of rain. Amen. If we are going to be salty in our life, it's going to come from the abundance of rain. Our creeks are higher. The river's higher. Streams are doing well. You know why? Because there is an abundance of rain. God has poured out of the Spirit. But only those who want to rise above the status quo Amen. will be filled. Yes. God help us. God help us. It's interesting. In Ezekiel chapter number 47. The word of God. And I'll be making reference. Back and forth to this. The Bible says afterwards. He brought me again to the door of the house. And beheld. Uh, waters issued out from under the threshold of the, uh, of the house eastward from, from the forefront of the house uh, stood toward the east and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Here it is. Ezekiel is speaking of a river that is flowing. He's speaking prophetically. And he's talking about this river that is flowing. I'm talking about being full of the Spirit of God. Amen. Which I believe is a river this morning. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so the Bible says this when he's speaking about the Holy Ghost, when he's speaking about the water, when he's speaking about the river, uh, there uh, in the 
Word of God, the Bible says, uh, uh, neither do men put new wine in the old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles uh, uh, perish. Uh, but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. I love what God does. I love what God does. He takes and He makes us a new creation. How many of you have ever looked before and, and you found a bottle along the road? I, I have some bottles that I found when, when, when we were remodeling our house. Brother David, uh, uh, whoever was building the house, liked to tip the bottle. It must have helped him a little bit. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not putting a stamp of approval on that. But Sister Dietrich, there behind the drywall were lots of bottles. And uh, uh, you look at those bottles, and it's amazing how bottles change over the course of time. But if you were this morning to take a bottle, and uh, you were to take that bottle that you found, and you found that it was an old beer bottle or a wine bottle, you may say there's nothing good about that. Brother Seville agrees with you. I don't put my stamp of approval upon that. Uh, I, I, everything in the Word of God is speaking about drunkenness. And God has displeasure in that. And so uh, you look at that and you find that, that, that here are these bottles, but you take them. And, and so I take them to my house, Sister Bev. I remember when a lot Sister Bev came by our house when we first got it. I was so embarrassed. The previous owner had beer bottles everywhere. Uh, I don't know who that is, so I'm not putting slammers in my But I thought, oh, dear Lord, please don't let them think that this pack. <laughs> I mean, they were all over the place. And uh, so we had to do a lot of clearing out. But if you would take those beer bottles and, and, and you would wash them, Sister Dietrich, and maybe someone would say, well, that's a dirty, nasty, bad old thing. So you bring it, you wash it, Brother Craig, and somewhere in the middle of the washing, that label falls off it. That's the beer bottle. And all of a sudden you clean it up and you realize that there can be something good put into that bottle. And over the course of time, you realize that, man, uh, there's the best uh, homemade, uh, whatever that is, uh, jam, jelly, or, or grape juice, or whatever you want to put in that. You realize that that bottle has transformed. It's not what it used to be, but it is new. Amen. And, and, and man, the value of that bottle is great. Do you know when Tabasco, uh, during the, 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 the very difficult time, in that area, when Tabasco began to make its sauce, they went out to the junkyard and they found all these glass bottles and they washed them and they cleansed them and then they uh, began to put Tabasco sauce in that and they began to sell. The bottles changed and now there's a wonderful new product that has taken America and the world by storm, Tabasco sauce. But it's not what used to be in that bottle. It is a new bottle. I want you to know this morning that God wants to take our vessels and how mired they may be and as bad as the label once may have been, God begins to wash it up. He cleanses it out. The old label falls off and he puts a new label of him on it and he puts inside that bottle a something that is great. It is new wine. It is fresh water. It is salt. And God says, now I want you to be effective. I want you to be a vessel of honor for me. Amen. God wants to fill your vessel this morning. And then God wants you to be salty. Who you were, you are no longer that person. Amen. You've been washed up. Amen. The label has changed. Amen. He didn't take your old sinful nature and try to put the Holy Ghost in it. Amen. He said, because that old sinful nature would break and the Holy Ghost would run out and it would be good. The bottle would be broken. Uh, there would be no way that, that the Holy Ghost could be kept in there. So he said, I'm going to make you a new vessel. Amen. Praise God. How many in here you're a new vessel? Amen. You're not who you used to be, but God got in you. He washed you up. Amen. The old label went off, and he put a new label on you. And now he says, not only am I going to save you by the power of my word and through the blood of Jesus Christ, but through my word and through promise, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want the word of God to dwell richly in you. I want it to be salty, and I want the experience of the Holy Ghost to be salty so that you can be effective in a very dysfunctional world. I'm talking about being a vessel of honor this morning. Amen. Amen. 
I was talking to Sister Jan last night, night on the phone, and I said to Sister Jan, I said, Sister Jan, you know, I know it went against your plans uh, of, of your discharge. I said, but I believe that, that God is in this. There must be some doctor. There must be some nurse. There must be someone there in that hospital that is going to need to have an encounter with you. Amen. So just let the Holy Ghost flow in. She said, oh, Brother Scott, I've already been talking to the doctor. Amen. And he's a believer too. I said, well, maybe he needs encouragement. We prayed on the phone and the Holy Ghost just began to flow through her. Amen. She's being salty even in the hospital. Praise God. That's what God wants in each of us. But Sister Jean chose that. And you and I have to choose that. Amen. A church in the middle of the church. A nation in the middle of a nation. A people in the middle of the world that chooses. The Word of God says in Ezekiel 47, and afterwards He brought me again to the door. And there was a river flowing out. The river sister came from the throne of grace. Hey, listen. I love Maricourt Bible Church and I love what we have. But the water don't flow from here. The water don't flow from any Bible college or any Bible institute. The water don't flow from any particular preacher or their organization. The water flows from the throne of grace. Amen. The water flows from God. Amen. And you've got to choose to dive into the water and let it fill your vessel this morning so that we can have revival. Amen. I want to have revival in this nation. Amen. I want the former and the latter rain to meet. Amen. The Word of God says that the sowers, uh, uh, as they sow, they're overtaken by the harvest. But it is, that means that as soon as they sow, all of a sudden the harvest is there. They can't hardly even sow anymore, my Bobby, because the harvest is so so great. Amen. I believe that God wants to work. Amen. In the sanctuary and in lives in the sanctuary to do something great. But you've got to choose to allow your vessel to be filled with the saltiness of God. What is salt? Went back in Leviticus chapter number 3, I believe it is, uh, that when they gave a meat offering, they were also to put salt upon that. Why? Amen. Because it was to be done with the Word of God. Amen. If there's anything we've got to live our life by and be preserved by, it is the Word of God. Joel said he would pour out a spirit. Ezekiel talked about a river. Amen. So we've got to grab onto the Word of God. Amen. And jump into the flow of the Spirit of God and allow it to fill our vessel this morning so that we can have revival. It's interesting. But in 2 Kings, and I know I'm wasting the clock, and I'll be very quick. But in 2 Kings chapter number 19, let me turn there and mark the wrong place. I'm sorry, 2 Kings chapter number 2, verse 19. The Bible says. I'm going to start verse number 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray you, the situation of the city is pleasant. As the Lord sees, but the water is not. The water is poison. Everything about the city is pleasant, but the water is poison. And the ground there, and he said, Bring me a new cruise. Come up. You get it? Bring me a new vessel. And put salt therein. Salt, the Word of God, the Spirit of God. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of waters and cast the salt in there. And said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano this morning, give me a few moments. Here it is in Jericho. 
that they had everything that was pleasant. Sister Rachel, everything was beautiful. Everything was pleasant. They had everything that they needed. But there was a problem, Brother Walt. The waters were poisoned. And so because the waters were poisoned, it was causing the land to be buried. Things just were not producing and multiplying. And so the man of God said this, Sister Rachel. He said, bring me a vessel full of salt. Listen to me this morning. Bring me a vessel full of salt. He took that vessel full of salt with David and he poured it into the spring. And all of a sudden the poison was gone and they began to water the trees and the trees began to bring forth fruit and the fruit could be harvested and ate. But up to this point, there was no cure. Everything was pleasant. Let me tell you, America is a very pleasant place. I mean, we have toleration like, oh, get out. And we have, we have whatever we need, a snap of a finger, a run to Walmart, a click of the button on the internet. I mean, we have it all. Really, America is a very pleasant place. But I need to tell you, we're much like Jericho. We are a very barren place. As pleasant as things are, as easy as things are, it is barren spiritually. And we need God to desperately move in America. What is going to bring revival? It's going to be men and women who will say, I'm the vessel and I am full of salt. Amen. And I will be dumped into the spring. Amen. What makes a difference between the tolerance of, 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 of sinful lifestyles when we get salt into the water? What makes a difference, amen, between lives that, that are looking and longing and poisoned and barren when we get salt in the water? Listen. The man of God, not Elisha, but Jesus Christ is looking for men and women who will be full of salt. But whether David will be willing to be dumped and poured into the spring so that the culture of the world changes. Poison is gone and life is given. In Ezekiel chapter number 47, we read about that river flowing from the throne of God. We know about wading in to various depths in the water. We know about jumping into the river. But Sister Tina, it says it flows into the marshes. Now I know this is speaking prophetically, and so, but, but, but allow me for a minute. It flows into the marshes. Those are areas that are dirty, and those are areas that are, are sinful. And the Bible says that the trees there, do you know in the Word of God that you and I are referred to as trees? Throughout the whole Word of God, you can look and men are referenced as trees. And the Bible says that as the water flowed and those trees got their roots down in and got water, that as they drew the water, that there were healing in their leaves. What is our leaves? Our hands. I believe that as the Bible says that we will be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Listen, we're living in a world where there is sickness in bodies where people need to see the power of God by the laying on of hands. I still believe in divine healing. I believe that there is also healing that is beyond just out of the physical body. But men and women need to see that hands are the saints of God who will be full of the Spirit of God and the saltiness of God that will put their hands and there will be healing. But we have to be the vessels this morning that are fit and neat and sanctified for the Master's use. I've said a lot of things this morning. There's a river flowing. Jump in. Get your roots down deep. Let healing flow throughout your leaves. But know that this world, as pleasant as things is, there is poison in the water. God is looking for men and women who will fill their vessels. The new vessel that God has given them that bears His name, not sin and the old nature, but His name filled with the Spirit, filled with salt, that will be poured in, that will say change happen in the world around us. Will you be the vessel of revival? If you will, this morning, would you just step out of your seat?
gathering around about this altar and allow the Spirit of God to pour salt into you.